Yearly, the Caribbean faces the threat of storms, killer hurricanes, and other natural disasters. With the impact of climate change, the trend is predicted to increase. What would you do if Barbados were impacted by a hurricane? How would you survive? First and foremost is safety, personal safety. Um, you don't want to be going outside if the all clear is not being given. You want to be aware of anything that may well have fallen in the vicinity of where you are. So primarily it's personal safety. One of the other things to be concerned about is down power lines. There have been, though light and power will normally turn off the power in the event of a, a severe strike or when the hurricane is happening. Um, there are cases where individuals have hooked up a generator to their house that haven't turned off the main breaker and power is fed back into the lines and people have been hurt touching power lines with that as well. We would advise uh, individuals to make sure that they don't have loose electrical wire right running around the house. Make sure your plugs are intact, um, your switches and so on are screwed on properly. Know exactly where your breaker panel is, um, which breaker supplies, if, if, you, if you can remember, where your breaker supplies, which area of the house is important to, to have a good idea. Some people live in the house for years and they don't have an idea of where the breaker panel is. So identify those things so that in an emergency, you can easily go and turn, and, and turn, and turn off in those areas and isolate the, whatever the source may be. Finding persons who are deceased is very traumatic for, for, as expected. And it is important that we realize that some of us might want to move persons that we've found to, to have died. And it's important that we do not. We need to cover any dead bodies with plastic, preferably. If you cannot find plastic, then we advise you cover them with cloth but just cover the body and leave it, don't move it. Well, the question of basic or simple first aid techniques um, is a question of what are the injuries. So if you know first aid, but then you know the basic, and that's what first aid is, a basic intervention, uh, hopefully to uh, save, preserve, preserve life, um, deal with cuts and bruises and so on and or any other uh, impact which the body may have but it will depend very much on what is the situation that you face, that a person is faced with. So if it's cut, naturally you stop bleeding, you try and stop the bleeding. If it's, if it's more serious than just a, a simple cut, then the need for greater first aid or medical assistance is, is critical. He's dead. Yeah. In a post disaster scenario, and these events occur where there might be a need to assist somebody from um, getting under a, a, a rubble pile, or uh, where there might be a small uh, fire in the home as a result of some mishap, that people can respond to these events. Because in some scenarios, the fire service might not necessarily be able to get to you in the time to render the type of assistance that you need. We might have um, fallen trees, we might have um, poles across the road and so on. And your emergency cannot wait until you get that first response here. 
and therefore the, the part of the, res the responsibility of the fire service, uh, we would say in a post-disaster context, is really preparing people before the event to ensure that if something happens, um, they have some capacity in responding to, to some of these scenarios that may arise. You can't say when response personnel will be able to get to wherever you are. Um, so it's a case of look after yourself. If there's damage to the roof, try and secure it. If it's leaking, if you have tarpaulin, put some tarpaulin on. But yes, help yourself first, then help your neighbours. What we advise is that we, you save the canned food for last. The items in the freezer, you should use first because really and truly those items will only, you know, you can only save them for about 48 hours. So you should cook the items in the, and eat the items in the freezer first and leave the canned food for last. We need to store tinned food. And I know a lot of us, as soon as I say tinned food, will think about corned beef and lunch and meat. And, but remember, these things are high in sodium. So we should also store other things such as canned fish, so tuna, sardines, also the canned vegetables and the canned fruit. Because it is important for us to recognize also that if we don't have access to water, we can also drink the water that is in the canned fruit and the canned vegetables. Well, we have to be very careful with water that we drink because we want to stay away from any water that has an odor. So any smelly water or water that is, is very cloudy because we know that type of water would have impurities. If you, do have, if you don't have any choice, um, you can use uh, water that is clear but you have to strain it because we want to get rid of any debris, um, any things like dirt or sediment in the water. So you can use a clean cloth, a, a, a clean shirt to, to filter the water before you boil it. So you need to boil the water first. You boil it for at least a minute. And I'm not talking about putting it on the heat for a minute. I'm talking about letting the water bubble so we know it's boiling, so it's bubbling for one minute. And then you put it in a clean container to, to cool. A person should not arm themselves in the aftermath of a disaster. The laws, there are laws, um, the laws of Barbados, the military and paramilitary personnel, they have to be armed. But the average citizens, they should not arm themselves because that will only lead to further disaster. The military personnel, paramilitary personnel, police, we are trained how to deal with persons, with, well, dangerous persons, persons armed. But the average citizen is not trained. So I will not advise persons to approach people who are armed. Leave that for the people who are trained. Looting, being realistic, looting happens but it is not acceptable. Persons look, or it is deemed that persons look to find food, but then persons also look and carry electrical items. Now, how can you carry electrical items if there's no electricity to, to use these items? But looting is always frowned upon. It happens, but it's always frowned upon. BDF is part of the emergency management system, one of the agencies in Barbados. And uh, we, if any BDF, we have um, a plan, we call it Cyclone Strike, which uh, pre-disaster, uh, our plan activates. And what we do is that we deploy teams. Um, we deploy a team on North, for instance, uh, Single C. And uh, we have teams that we deploy uh, other places as well. And uh, what those teams are involved in is one, they deploy pre the disaster, before the disaster occurs, so that in during day zero and the all clear is given, they can effect um, either doing root clearances and also uh, rescue, uh, do any rescuing as required to help any person that may have been impacted negatively by uh, the disaster. So a lot of the things what we do is uh, we ensure that we are we all have our training prior to that. Um, equip our teams properly. Uh, once we deploy them, then they'll be able to effect uh, what is required. 
working in conjunction with all the other uh, emergency services who are involved in the whole um, process across the area. One, two, three, up. Why don't? So if you understand what a hurricane brings, you don't play with a hurricane. And you make sure that however much you have to prepare for it, however much you didn't feel that you, you, you wanted to do it, you do it. And the corned beef and the tuna and all of the pap goods, they don't spoil. The water, they don't spoil. You use them at the end of the hurricane season so your money has not been wasted. Similarly, your medication, particularly if you are an older person or if you're suffering from chronic diseases, make sure that you have enough medication in your possession in the household because if the hurricane does hit believe you me your access to food medication and all of the other critical things that you need will not be there the other problem immediately after a hurricane is connectivity and transport you know, there's no guarantee that if you are living in the country or even parts of town with all the trees that we have across Bridgetown that you'll be able to easily move to where you need to move and equally remember that because national security is an imperative there is no guarantee that you'll be able to do so without curfews being in place so these are all of the things that require you to plan plan and plan there was uh, the Billy used to tell us all the time as young people in public life have plan A, plan B and plan C well I tell you have plan A, B, C, D and E we are truly grateful for those Barbadians who want to agree to help us man the country once a hurricane is coming somebody has to do it and we accept that as you do it that you are leaving behind your family and your friends and your home and we are eternally grateful for that sacrifice that you are making make sure that before you leave your home that you've left them in good position and that they themselves are capable of being taken care of because the last thing that we need is for you to be worried about your own family and your own circumstances as you go to help others. Secondly, make sure that you yourself are adequately equipped with your soda fix and your medication and all of the things that you need to survive at a personal level. As they tell you on a plane, if you don't take care and ensure your own individual survival, you can't help the other people that you're supposed to help. And finally, make sure that you do it with a cheerful spirit. A lot of people on that day will be anxious. A lot of people may even be very, very upset because of what they've lost. And more than anything else, people need a smile and a shoulder to hold on to as they meander and navigate through what is potentially the most disruptive incident in their lives.